where did we begin? Where did it all begin? I'd been a dancer all my life, and yoga was the natural evolution. And when I first moved to the West Coast from New York, being an actress by profession, and I was introduced to Bikram and uh, his style of yoga. And I bowed at his feet for probably about two and a half years. But I just found my second great passion in life, acting being one of them, my first, and uh, the theater, and uh, yoga. And that was over 30 years ago. I have since left Bikram and have moved on to many different styles of yoga. Ashtanga, I practiced and taught for many years. And Kristen is the one who really got me it, it, teaching at urban yoga because I was here in the desert. Why do I do yoga? It feels good. It works for me. And in teaching and in sharing this, in te I also teach acting, and I use yoga as part of my practice because an actor has two things to use, his voice and his body. And to become comfortable in your own body, I think, is key to life, to key to contentment. I mean, we can go to a gym, nothing against gyms and stairmasters and repeat the same robotic movement. For me, yoga is creative. And the thing about yoga, it matures and ages with us, our practice. We never have to go, oh, I hurt my back, I can't play tennis anymore, I can't play golf anymore, I can't do bicycle anymore, I got bad knees. Can't say that about yoga. Yoga matures with you. Now, I don't do the big hot Bikram anymore, I don't do the big, all the Chaturangas and Ashtanga anymore, but I have a very creative practice and I hope I bring that to, uh, to teaching to get people comfortable in their own bodies and to stop saying, I don't think I can do that. Can't is a four-letter word. Not available today, maybe, but rising to the challenges of yoga as we rise to the challenges on our mat. And people, after they master something, this sense of confidence, this sense of, oh my gosh, I did it, I did it, I did it, and this laughter, this contentment, this empowerment, so that's another reason. And just in my class earlier, I, I know I've never done a headstand. I don't think, oh my gosh, I did my first headstand. I did this. I said demystifying yoga. I mean, there's so much of this going on, which is wonderful. And I bring that to my classes as well. But if it's just about getting comfortable in your own skin and flexing those muscles, standing tall, I said no dowager humps, no quasimodos allowed, greeting the world with an open heart full lungs, expressing yourself instead of creeping around the world like this when you walk into a business meeting, when you walk into a party and people see you standing tall, erect and proud, not, proud, not arrogant, proud, comfortable in your own skin. That's eye-catching. That's empowering. That's another reason I do yoga. It's empowering. And I like working out, and I like staying flexible. And I like the fact that my wonderful kind of, not kind of, manic energy is stilled and focused. As I like to say at the end of class, the goal and the purpose of all of our work is to steady the mind and still the body. To steady the body and still the mind. When people come in and they're just all over the place, they're scattered. I say, you got a business meeting or you got crazy people coming over to your house and you're just all over the place or you want to uh, accomplish something, start a project or even more, finish a project and all of a sudden you're all over the place. Do a standing pose, balancing pose. It will immediately bring your attention back and your concentration. So it truly is mind, body and spirit. Practice. Nothing against stair masters, but this. We're not robots. We're energy. We're not lead. We're free. We're light. And that's what's exciting to bring to people, to bring to my life, to bring to other people's lives. And they think, I can't do this, I can't do this. And by the end of class, they're like, wow. The power of yoga, it ages with us and keeps us ageless. <laughs>